Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm out on the big boat with the little boat, the big duck, as a um, exploration vehicle. We're in uh, a river system, very beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually quite cool. Everything's wet, have a look. Have a look, it's just, yeah. Everything's just soaked. Um, yeah, day two actually. So um, had a good day yesterday. Went fishing up that way. Got a bunch of mangrove jack. I think I only caught three cod late in the afternoon. So that was pretty cool. Um, can't remember the biggest one. It was a nice fish. Oh, there goes a bird. So yeah, we were um, going to take the big duck and do a bit of exploring. The tide's going to push in very shortly, so I've got to get moving. Well, there's probably a couple of caves that I want to find. I haven't found them yet. I've tried twice now already. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do. I think we might do some bushwalking today. But first, go exploring in the boat. Oh, crab pots! We got to check crab pots. In case we don't catch crabs this morning, I'm just going to load the boat up with all the gear, and then we don't have to come back to the big boat, and we can just fish for. Yeah, I don't know, half the day. We'll see how we go. Got the three samurai rods, really nice to use, and a couple of new reels on this trip, so. And those of you that saw last episode, I installed a multi-power point tracking charge controller. This makes charging batteries from solar much more efficient, and I did check. Oh no, eight amp hours. There you go, that's how much went in, eight amp hours. It's not too bad, just a little solar panel at the moment. The idea with the iTech World stuff is that I can go on long trips, have fridge running all the time, um, charge stuff off this, and I don't have to worry about the, um, the crank batteries for the boat. You don't want to be in a remote place and have flat batteries. Actually got a, a little doodad. I reckon I'll show you that later today. Um, Pretty cool bit of gear, and I reckon we'll cook my lunch with it. Mm -hmm. I can't remember yesterday if I mentioned how much I like the um, eight carrier braid Atomic. Sorry, Atomic. Yep. Um, it is so smooth and soft and strong for its diameter. It's um, yeah, I'm, I'm really loving fishing with it. Pretty sure I'll go with a soft plastic, but let's not put a lure on just yet. I learnt this trick guiding in the Northern Territory. Put a couple of loops in there. In a line, I won't go anywhere. Yeah, see that? Pretty cool. <laughs> so if you saw the last episode, you may remember me saying that in a river system, the tide changes outside first and then takes a while to yeah, come in. Uh, it's now probably about 7.30 and low tide was at five. So two and a half hours later and the water here is still flowing out. As soon as this tide changes, it's gonna push and push hard because it's got that, that, that height difference of like two and a half to three hours. We're gonna catch a bunch of fish. <laughs> I hope I didn't just jinx it. See, it's pretty shallow. Sandbars, sandbars, sandbars. Look at that. It's actually cool, this, this boat, even with the, the petrol motor on, I'm driving through less than a foot of water at, yeah, reasonable, actually that's, yeah, that's less than a foot there, see that? That is very shallow. And I don't think we're, we're not kicking up any sand. So I could definitely go a bit shallower, not that I really want to. A little bit scared of crocs in a, in a boat this big, and that crab pot looks like it's moved, that's not good. So I think the current's moved it. Looks like nothing's gone in there. Leave it here. Leave it right where I was. I just came through there and I just realized in my excitement, the first pot I set was way back near the boat. So yeah, messed that up. I did consider keep fishing up this, but now I have to go back and check that first pot. I don't want to leave it all day. And this is, this is how I intended to set the pots, all of them is to walk in and find little gutters and hopefully get crabs. Let's see what we've got. Nothing. Put him here again. Don't feel confident with crabs in the middle of winter. And you'll notice I've moved the fuel tank forward. There's, there's a reason for that because I've got, I don't know, 50 something kilos of engine here already and that's the deepest part of the boat. And Big Duck, if you're watching, 
To get through really shallow water, a good tip is to deflate the keel bladder. It um, creates a V, whereas in shallow, like shallow water like this, you want it as flat as possible. So I've actually deflated that, which I'll reinflate later on, but I'm getting through water that deep just by dragging it, and then, yeah, I have to really struggle when, when it's like two inches deep. I haven't uh, had that many sand flies on me this morning. It is pretty though, very nice, calm, sort of tannin stained, clear water, still really good for jack fishing. And the other technique is for me to lean as far forward as I can and basically steer with my knee. <laughs> no, I've got my hand on the tiller but yeah, I'm, I'm putting as much weight forward so the engine comes up a little bit. And my lure is somewhere in here, actually on the way back I might try and get that, but it is its weight, oh the tide's come right into. Safe to say, actually this one has not moved. I was gonna say it's safe to say they've all moved, but this one has not moved. Oh. Let's have a look, and nothing. I do think I need a mid-sized pot. The big ones are too big on the, on the boat, the big boat, and these are too small, I reckon. I actually don't see any crab holes anywhere along here. Can you see the vapor coming out of my mouth? It's there. Oh, gotta lean forward again. This is the shallow section. Shallow, shallow, shallow. Come on, duck. It's time for walkies. Very shallow right through here. But I think deflating the keel is not a bad idea. Oh, I wish I had a thought of this yesterday. Deflating that V and moving the fuel tank forward is so much easier. I just wasn't thinking straight because the sand flies were hammering me so bad. We have to get out and do another walk. I actually enjoy these little walks. Oh, come on boat. There you go. Not going anywhere. Although the tide I think has turned already. Now where is... There it is. But yeah, look at this. Tide is pushing in already. So can I grab it without getting eaten by a crocodile? Oh. Okay, there we go. Oh, and it's stuck. It is stuck. Why is it stuck? Oh, that was on oysters. And nothing. Seeing as I couldn't get that plastic back, I've got a re-rig this morning. I'm just using a Superline Gamagatsu 5 -0. It's a weedless worm style hook. And six inch Plazos Jerk Minnow. The reason I'm using this setup with no weight is I want to skip it into all the structure as far as I can because that's where the big jacks are hiding. Now it just occurred to me this morning, a shiner is basically an American herring. So the profile's a little fatter than a herring, but yeah, think of these as herring in Australia. We're in stealth mode and yeah, I think we're just going to start fishing good looking mangroves as we go along. Let's have a look how fast that stick and that leaf are, are moving. Basically as fast as we are, that's, that's how fast the tide's pushing in. So trying to get ahead of this tide is gonna be pointless. And that's pretty normal when you, when you do a fishing trip, sort of, you're lucky if half the stuff you plan actually works out the way you want it to. So I got in here, but it, it is the wrong tides and I, I knew that coming in. I need, I need low tide, you know, so, somewhere between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, and today low tide is like 5.30, I think. But first cast of the morning at the first good-looking snag. It's actually looking nice spot here. Perfect. Get it right in the spot. Current zipping past. Oh, you'd expect there to be fish there. No. Now having said that my initial plan is not going to happen, I am now thinking I'll still go up as far as I can and then I'll fish this river at full high tide as far as I can go and when I go back I can fish it at low tide the next time. And it's just a, I don't know, I just, I just like doing, doing things like that, it's good reconnaissance. Some rocks over here, right up against the edge, just on top of them. 
Yep, got him. Oh, what have we got? Flipping around a bit. Cod, I think. Yep, it's a cod. Hello. First fish of the morning. No glamour shot. Just a little black spot cod. Hey, off you go, buddy. Little black fip. And oh, almost a double. There you go. Reckon there's more along here. Can see a whole bunch of rocks on this point. I reckon we'll get a fish here for sure. Casters, yeah, a little too far to the right, but fish it anyway. Oh, got him halfway back. Oh, not a bad fish. Oh, staying down deep. Caught again, maybe. The weight's, yep, caught, I reckon. Bit of weight, yep. Uh, another black spot. Yesterday we start, oh, what are you doing? There you go. Yesterday we started off with Jack, 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 and today, we're into the black spot cod. He's actually a really healthy looking fish. Look at that. He's probably, oh, stop doing the banana. He's probably a little bit under legal size. Actually, no, he'd go legal. But we've still got the mango jack from yesterday. Flippy. There you go. Half a backwards pike, I believe they call that. <laughs> Leave them out. And there's definitely more fish there if we don't. We didn't even hit the right spot. If we don't spook them, I reckon we'd get another one out of there straight away. That's close to the rock. Yeah, that's perfect. Yep. Oh, gentle take. Oh, a bit of weight in that one. Oh, feels like another. Oh, I dropped it. Oh, I think that was a cod. Anyway, keep going. Whoops, that was a bounce on a rock. Don't mind bouncing on a rock. If you bounce on a rock, it means you're in the zone. As long as you don't get caught on the rock. Yep. Oh, oh that's a big one. That is a big one. Oh, another cod. Oh, I think, yeah, because I've tightened the drag up, they feel bigger. But he's not a bad fish. Look at this current ripping through here now. Yeah, he's um, definitely a legal fish. 38 centimetres for cods is legal. And I should be showing you the lure. It's that uh, salmon coloured shiner because I'm just a little bit... I'll just throw this guy back. I'm just trying to fish this area before we drift over it. I think I've already just missed my big spot. We're just drifting too fast. I'm having teething problems with my head camera, so I thought I'd show you a stingray. He's just over here. Have a look. There he is. Cruising along. Oh, and there's a mangrove jack, I believe. Hmm, I'm not going to be able to film that one. This isn't how I like to film. I want to get you closer to the action, but um, yeah. The new camera, I haven't, I haven't totally sorted it out yet, and it's overheating, and like it's 8 o'clock in the morning, it's already overheated. So I've got some, yeah, mucking around to do with that one. But you may as well watch from that angle and see what we can get along here. Oh, come on, come on. Got it. Oh, that was a big jack. And we've just ruined the spot. I was so close. <laughs> I might just try and back out real gently. Let's see if we can get another one right in there. I do think I'll just ruin it. Oh, big jack. Oh, really? Oh, I just snapped the rod. Must have um, like over bent it. That's no good. That was a big jack, and I did I turn this one up? No, that drag's not too tight. Yeah, don't know what happened there. Ah, oh, that was a good fish. He was yeah, he was a good 45. I think I must have just over bent the rod, like trying to strike. I'm not used to sitting down fishing. Um, I do have a spare tip for this, but it's actually at home, so. Spin rod it is. Oh no, bait caster. Look at that, first cast, perfect. 
not to get frustrated. Oh, big jack. Got him, yes. Oh, look at that. Second cast. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. And I reckon he grabbed it because that lure looks like a little prawn at it. Yeah, I like him. Shiner 85 in, I don't know what color it is. To me, it looks like a little prawn with, um, yeah, nice egg color at the front. Oh, today is definitely going to be harder because the light spin rod snapped the tip off it and this one it's too heavy for the the plastics i want to cast in the mangroves and bait caster he's, he's not a skipping rod i really should have brought tip for that one get a little glamour shot with this guy i reckon he's about 35. beautiful fish they are hey and i'm gonna release shot underwater been a bit slack with those lately because I just don't like sticking cameras underwater after my last one. Oh, he's a snappy one, this one. Snappy, snappy. It's a good chance he'll um, take off real quick. I'm not going to let him go until he's well underwater. Oh, he's still snapping underwater. Hey, off you go, buddy. Swim off slow. Oh, nice. Very nice. <laughs> that was cool. Um, while I'm at it, I'll show you this lure. So it's Shiner 85 by Atomic. When I saw this, this these are only out fairly new. I think new. I, I only just got them anyway. Um, 85 mil long and kind of see-through with this prawn pattern and orange head. I mean, I saw these and I'm like, yep, I've got to get one of those or two of those. And uh, yeah, perfect size for, for jacks. So you can see how shallow it is. It's probably six, seven inches. And we're managing to float through. I'm trying to avoid these little extra sandbars. Oh, I think we'll get stuck on this one. Oh, look at that. That's like less than three inches. We went over it. Very cool. Um, so we are actually pushing in f like way past where a normal boat would go. Like a normal boat wouldn't wouldn't go here. But then most normal people wouldn't fish in crocodile <laughs> rivers the way I do. There is, like I said, there's only a slight chance of crocs being in here because the water is generally so clear. Oh. Looks like two inches is our limit. Oh no, we're getting over it. That is amazingly shallow. I hop out and the big duck, come on, come on. It's just going through on its own. <laughs> just that extra weight. But yeah, three inches, two inches here. And yep, it's doing it. Wow, that's cool. Better hop in before it gets deep. I am struggling to use this bait caster to skip plastics. Oh, here he goes again. Oh, and again. Oh, I've got to use the other rod. I'm just struggling with this bait caster to skip. We've got some serious current happening here. Use the current to position your lures. Oh, didn't get anything. Let's try this one. Oh, we are hooting along way too fast. I do not want to go this fast. Watch the bubbles here and see how fast this current's going. It's um, definitely not an easy place to fish when the tide's ripping. High tide or low tide's probably better. But half tide like this when it's just pushing over all the sandbars and got a lot of height behind it. It's um, yeah, a bit of a challenge, especially when I'm not fishing weedless like the way I would like to. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, another one. They're just not, um, because I'm fishing weedless, the hook's tucked right in. Oh, that jack warrants a few more casts. He was a big sucker. I'm just going to drop my little anchor and uh, see if we can get him. I reckon, yeah, not a bad spot here. Oh, he had a go. Missed it. Missed it or refused it? I don't know. That could have been the one I'm after. Oh, had a looker. Come on. Oh, they're a little bit hesitant on this plastic, I think. I might 
I don't know, I might change to another one. They're really... I mean, the current probably has a little bit to do with it. Fast moving water. But my hookup rate today is pretty darn low. Big one! Got him! Oh, and he's got me in! That is a big one. Oh, that's the one I saw, I think, first up. Oh, I think he's on that stick. Yep, he's on that stick. That is a monster. He'd go 45. Oh, no, it's a cod. That's not the jack I saw. Come on, swim up, swim up, swim up. Oh, okay, we got him out. Doesn't mean we got him, but we got him out. Oh, big cod. Biggest cod for the trip. He'd go 45, I reckon. We'll measure this one. Got him. There you go, 40s. Oh, look at that. That is there, 45 on the dot. Actually, tad over. There you go. It's hard up against there. Yep, 45 and two or three mils. I am finding today a little challenging to fish, but when you get a 45 centimeter black spot cod, it's, um, it's not a bad day. <laughs> Oh, that's my lip hold. I've got, got the side of his mouth, top and bottom of the jaw. And that's how I'm holding some of these fish. You can't do it on mangrove jack, but cod, you can do that quite easily. Okay, camera's working. Oh, not real straight. Let's give it a shot. Let's try down this way a bit. Right in. Oops, not that far in. Oh, tea bag. Oh, and he got it. He got it. Oh, and he dropped it. He actually had that. Yep. Oh, that's a jack. And he's around the same timber that the cod was around. Come on, swim forward. Oh, I might have to go in there and get him. He's still on. He won't come off there. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, now I've got the anchor out. Sometimes they just mess you around. Hey, mid 30s again? No, low 30s. Low 30 mangrove jack. There you go. Nice little fish. I'm calling him 33. Big canine dog fangs. And uh, big eye. Look at the yellow on top. Not sure I've ever noticed the yellow on top there before. Use that little iris part. Hey, off you go. Nice release. There you go. Bye bye. Still not the big one. Let's try a Plazos prong prawn sort of pattern. This is the is it electric chicken or nuclear chicken? I think it's electric chicken. One of those. All right, something with a few more little wiggly bits and some eyeballs. Oh, got him. That's a nice. I think it's a jack. Look, Brad. Oh, he's got a lot of power. Oh, I've take, turned the drag down on this. Oh, and it's a cod again. Oh, not calling him now. Usually I'm pretty good with calling fish, but when they hit like that. Oh, he's a nice one, too. He'd go 43, maybe. Bets are in. I reckon, yeah, he'd go close to 45. 40. No, I said 43. Let's go with 43. You're wondering why you're seeing my ugly face again? It's because the other camera overheated right after I caught that fish. So hopefully I got the capture in. Um, I called it 43. Let's have a look. Let's see, mouth is right there. And oh, look at that. It's, it's almost like I cheat. That is right on 43. Look at that. <laughs> I usually use my hands to, to measure fish, but when you get your eyecrometer in, you're, um, you're pretty good. I mean, you can get pretty good. Not that I am pretty good. Anyway, let's let this fish go. Okay. I didn't get as far as I wanted and I didn't catch the mangrove jack I wanted. But yeah, I'd say 12 or 12.30. Lunch is gonna take a little while, so 
yeah, I reckon we might have an explore. But first, I'm gonna get back to the boat and uh, get lunch ready. It's something different, something I haven't shown yet. And it kind of goes with the iTech World stuff because, yeah, I wanna have different cooking options in different places. I've inflated the keel again and we should be able to, yeah, get up on the plane and get to the boat nice and quick. Chose unwisely. I should have, uh, yeah, gone on the outside edge and then shot across, cross over here. But that's all right. We can do shallow. <laughs> Safety lanyard on, and look for deep water this time. adjust the solar panels too. I had them um, pitched up so that we got the morning sun. Now we're gonna have to put them down to get the afternoon sun. Nice. What are we having for lunch I hear you say? I pulled this out of the fridge earlier. It's a meat pie. How are we gonna cook it? In an oven. That's the usual way. This is the little tacker road oven or in this case boat oven. <laughs> I think it draws 60 watts, which is what, five amps? Um, and if I have this running for an hour or two, it's gonna, yeah, pretty much draw the batteries. And that's why the iTech 120 amp hour lithium is ideal for, for this. Plus, having the solar right now, actually I've got to adjust it, um, pumping the power in, I reckon we should have lunch in about 20, 20 odd minutes, maybe 30. Let's go for a quick explore whilst I'm heating the pie. Let's check out how the system's going. I've just flattened the panel, we're getting two amps in, that's not too bad. And let's see, 16 amp hours, so we've already got eight amp hours today. Because that's why I checked it this morning. Uh, we had eight already and we've got 16 now. I've still got to do all my wiring for this, this setup. Turn it on, there it is, she's on. Normally you're supposed to let the oven get to proper temperature. But because I'm going exploring, we're putting our chunky beef, bacon and cheese pie in now. Come back in 20 minutes, half hour, and hopefully it's hot enough. So it's only quarter past 12. Pretty cool. All right, we know what the time is. Come back, and hopefully that's hot. I'm not drinking wine out of the bottle. <laughs> this is actually fresh, fleshy, freshly squeezed. Um, try to say that a few times. Freshly squeezed passion fruit juice. Thanks to mum. I gotta take her out again and actually if you mum if you're watching this I found a couple of bommies on the way out here the night before I reckon there's gonna be some pretty cool fish so anyway uh, what I was gonna say is um, I'm stuck in here now I can't get the big boat out the tides are dropping very fast so I'm in here till tomorrow lunchtime roundabout so I may even get a third episode which is something I've been wanting to do for a long time so the thing I'm looking for, you can see big rocks up, up along the ridge there. And then we've got a bit of a gully here with, with like palm trees in it. And palm trees generally indicate water. So, I don't know, I'm hoping big rocks can have caves and palm trees indicate water. So, it's to me it's a good spot to have a camp. Tie the boat on with two different ropes, an anchor and tied to a mangrove. Should not go anywhere. Looks a bit muddy down there. Hmm, let's see. I'm gonna find out sooner or later. Keep an eye out for crocodiles. Oh, it's a little boggy, but it's not too bad. Let's 
see if there's oysters for future reference. I see some small ones. Can you have a look? Just little, 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 little. That's about the biggest one I've seen and it's like really old. And before we've even got above the high water mark, there is an eagle's feather. That's a massive feather and check this out. There is little feathers all over the ground here. So I reckon big eagle, a nice roost somewhere in one of these trees. And yeah, he dropped something here, like a wing or something. Now let's have a look here. These palms, these are cool. These are Australis. I think, I'm pretty sure they're Australis palms. But there you go, native Australian palm. We're in a bit of a forest of them. This is what I saw from the water. And tucked in there, pandanus. That one in there is a pandanus. Hard to tell, but this is about a 30 degree slope. I'm having trouble standing up. I'm kind of falling uphill. And I see, I see the big rock in front of us out there. That's, uh, yeah, like 40 meters above me there. Here we've got some more pandanus there and there. And then that there, I think that's a solitaire palm. There's one there and one just behind this dead palm here. I think I've gone from looking for a cave to trying to get to the top of this rock. I've been just going up to the right the whole time. And it's just, just constant climbing and slippiness. And within like three or four minutes, here I have a view. Oh. <coughs> that's actually the slope of the rock. So don't let me fall off. You can see a little bit of the river system in here. Very hard to see. Sulfur crested cockatoo. <laughs> Don't know if he's upset at me or what, but yeah, I gotta be careful. Any step closer that way, I'll end up woo, down the bottom. And I reckon I'm 120 meters, maybe 100 meters above sea level. So the boat is at sea level. And check this out. Oh, this actually looks like a flat bit of rock here. Oh, imagine pitching a tent up here. That's the river. It's pretty cool. Oh, not the cave I wanted, but it is nice. It is nice. Woo! Did I mention I get carried away when I go exploring? I saw this rocky outcrop. We're, we're probably, I don't know, another 80, 100 meters up. And, oh, come on, come on. And because I don't see any vegetation behind it, I'm hoping I get a good view on the other side of the island. Top of a ridge here. Oh, oh look at this. Check this out. Oh, and that, that's a puddle of fresh water. I'm not drinking it, but I reckon animals would. That is so cool. Oh, let's have a look over this side. Oh man, this is so cool. I have actually walked up this one. It's interesting that I'm on the other side now. Wow. Oh. So yeah, they could easily be. Oh, look at is that. No, it doesn't go all the way to the mangroves there. But yeah, it's like a full drop. I may have to come and, f and check out this this spot here for caves. But look at that. That's the other side of the island. Well, the other side's over there. <laughs> this is just this bay. I'll see you back at the boat, I reckon. I'll find that cave one day. There's another one that I know where it is too, but yeah. Well, this one I don't know where it is. I'm just trying to find something that I've heard rumors about. Oh, I can smell pie. I hope it's not too far gone. Just before two o'clock, I left it way too long. Oh, look at the moisture. Yeah, I left that way too long. Oh, hopefully it doesn't steam up too much. Yep, oh, that's fine. That is hot. Whoa, I've got to put it down. Put it down. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, ow, ow. Yeah, now that's like 80 or 90 degrees steam coming out of that. Mm. And definitely next time, see all that moisture there? Preheat the box first, the um, little chef. And uh, then put it in when it's nice and hot. To go with the pie, I'm just going to whip up a quick salad. We got homegrown kale, tomato, some cheese. And then to spice things up, a little bit of olive oil and uh, soy sauce. And I forgot to mention a little vinegar, rice wine vinegar in this case. Lunch is served. Salad probably took me six, seven minutes to make. This actually still feels really hot. Mm, 
perfect. It's not too hot. Hasn't cooled down much, too much. Mm, how nice is it having a bake, bacon, cheese, meat pie on the boat? It's still really hot inside too. Mm. Let me know what you think I should cook with my little little chef. Loving there. Um, we're just going to talk about breaking rods. It's always user error. So I take full responsibility for breaking that rod. Sometimes if you stand on it or slam it in the car door, it'll weaken it. I don't think that's what happened. I, um, I take really good care of my rods. So I do think I, when I struck, I just high sticked it too much with too big a fish on it. I tested the drag on the reel. It wasn't um, overly strong. It was, yeah, if, if anything, it was a bit light to be honest. Um, but I think, yeah, just me yanking it back so far because I was sitting down, awkward position, all that sort of stuff. I've got the other rod. I've chucked it in the boat already. So we can skip plastics into the um, mangoes for the afternoon session. Oh, I was hoping to be out of the sun while I'm eating this. If you just lean back, there we go. Mm. But yeah, let me know what you want me to cook in that little oven with the, um, the iTech battery. Um, don't ever run a little oven, doesn't matter what size, off your, off your car starting battery or boat starting battery unless it's running and it turns off turns the oven off when you stop the engine running because you will drain um, a starting battery like real fast and then see you guys on the water we'll get there a little bit earlier today yesterday was a little bit rushed so the afternoon session begins I must say I do like this mini mothership venturing with the, the big duck the little dinghy and the big comfortable boat. We just uh, yeah, have lunch in shade, jump in the little boat and fish till, I don't know, till it gets a little darker. I could get lucky. Who thinks I'm gonna get lucky? <laughs> and in case you're wondering, it's about, I'm gonna say guess, 23, 24 degree air temperature. It's just, just nice, um, yeah. Walking up on the hill just earlier, I was actually at the top of that rant, that hill. Uh, that was rather hot and sweaty. But a little relax on the boat and some lunch, and I am raring to go. Oh, look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. Oh, three of them. Three of them, three of them looked at it. Oh, I can see them all sitting in there. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. They're right there. Now the wind's going the other way. That's in there. Oh, he's on it, he's on it. Got him, yes. Oh, oh, I dropped him again. I struck and the hook is out. Oh, man. Okay, we gotta pull one out of here. Oh, that's way in there. Come on, hit it. Yep. Ah, oh, oh, smoking me, smoking me. Oh, I'll be lucky to get that one out. Nice and gentle. And try not to get in the snag as well. It's slowly coming. Now I gotta paddle away. Oh, is that him? Is that him? Is he out? Yes, he's out. Oh, that was easy to extract. Very lucky I was there. Guess what? I got lucky. <laughs> oh, and he's got his friends. There's at least four fish following him. Oh, what a decent sized fish. Come here. Come here. There we go. Nice. Afternoon is on. There we go. He's actually a really healthy looking fish. Oops, let you go, come on. Don't warn the others. Oh, this wind is all over the shop. It's coming from that way, that way, behind me. Oh, that was a barracuda. Check the leader on that one. Oh, look at that. Almost severed it in half. I'm gonna have to change that plastic. That's gone. I think this colour's called Old Penny, like the copper sort of look to it. All right, who's next? <laughs> this is where I just heard that big fish splashing. Yep, right about there, I reckon. Right there, come on. Yep, got him. Oh, oh I did me. Ah, didn't get the hook up. He had it. Probably grabbed it about middle of the plastic. You know how I said I wasn't feeling it? Well. I'm changing it up a little bit. Not much. 
still going weedless, but I'm putting a atomic weighted worm hook. This is a one, hard to read that, one sixth maybe of an ounce. Um, so yeah, what I think is because I want to fish into the like into the light, the fish are not on the surface; they're down a little bit because the sun's like right in their face. I must say this plastic with that extra weight is actually skipping better than they were before. I think it's the um, the weight, the momentum. And I've just heard a couple of pops, so I reckon they might be starting to turn on. Yep, just like that. Oh, got me around, got me around. Where is he? And what have we got? Is that, could be an orange spot caught. Or gold spot. Yep, first for the trip. But one fish in the boat after not having many, and I start feeling better straight away. Come on, Mr. Curly Cod. Hey, he looks pretty healthy. He's doing the cod curl for me. There he is, a little gold spot or orange spot cod. They grow a lot bigger than that. Oh, he's got a little black spot on his tail. Let go, let go. It's been about an hour since I heard the popping and I thought I'm not getting any hits so I'll make it really obvious that they've got to hit my lure. Yep. Uh, uh, I've got a strike. Oh. And he bit my tail off. It's like the second or third cast with that. Damn it. That's what happens when you're trying to move around a small boat. I just dropped that in the water. And luckily it got stuck on my foot because the rod could have ended up in the drink. Yep, got him. Oh, just not staying connected today. Yep, that's a good one. Oh, and straight in. Oh, I think I'm going to lose that one. Yep, he's still there. And he's out, he's out, he's out. Oh, we got a cord. Oh, I would have been happy with even a catfish just now. It's been that slow. I had plenty of food for lunch. It's just, yeah, casting two, three hundred times. Takes it out of you. Hey, little black spot. Off you go, buddy. See ya. Oh, big swirl. Massive swirl. Oh, get out, get out, get out. Fair bit of weight on him. Didn't see it, but it was a huge swirl. What have we got? Oh, yeah, cod. Oh, two in a row. That's like the next cast. Maybe they're switching on for the evening. Oh, nice gold spot. Yeah, he's, um, I reckon he'd go legal. Hey, gold spot, orange spot in front of the rod, behind the rod. Beautiful, hey? Off you go, buddy. He's, yeah, he's definitely legal. Oh, and I haven't shown you today yet. I'm fishing with the new, whoops, where are we? I'm fishing with new reels, Major Craft. This is a 2500 Siana. So yeah, really nice reel. Got 20 pound braid on that. Um, 30 pound leader this time. And the arrows, Atomic Arrows, Barra, six medium heavy. Um, spin rod, six foot long, 12 to 25 pound. Nice little outfit. So it looks like my big jack for the day is, um, yeah, going to be a no-show. I've still got, I don't know, we'll do another 50 meters, maybe 100. Um, I'm going to skip all these boring bits. There's no, no structure in the water. I do still have a chance, but it's getting smaller and smaller as we run out of this water hole. Actually, that might be a log sitting there. Jacks do like logs. There we go, perfect. Right there. Oh, oh got nailed. <laughs> oh, that was as quick as a jack. I think he tore the front out of that. Yep, he certainly did. <sighs> Always stop for the interesting things. I'm, I'm sticking with white because that's what they're grabbing now. That was a very, very good fish. He will not be back. Oh, 
right in there. Oh, and I got him. I was hoping I wouldn't because there's a crab pot there. Oh, oh no, he's steam training me. We should be right with the crab pot. It's just one rope. The pot's actually just there. Feels like another cod. Looks like we'll go right on top of this rope. I reckon it's actually an abandoned pot because it's been here for three days and no one looked at it. There we go, we got him. Well, we don't have him, but he's over the rope. Oh, nice black spot. It's cod afternoon. Did I catch a jack? I think I did straight, like when I first started, I caught a jack. But I think it's been cods after that. Beautiful black spot. Sunset cod, hey. Let's you look at him. Hey, off you go, buddy. I might let go. There you go. Oh, got hit. And got him. That's a smaller one. That's not the one hit me first. Oh, there's two of them. Two together. That's a little one. Another gold spot. Let's see if we can just drop you right here. There we go. Off you go. Oh, there's definitely something going on over there. Yep. Yeah, it feels like a cod. Let's not mix it up with anything else. Let's just get cods. That's what... Oh, dropped it. That's what catching fish does when you're trying to fish. <laughs> well, the sun's behind the mountain, so it's going to get dark quick. Oh, I missed a whole bunch of fish. I'm, I'm not hitting the strikes. I'm, I'm not going to show them to you. But, um, yeah, they're, they're either taking me under or just dropping it. So we'll do another five, ten minutes, but I don't want to get home as late as I did yesterday. It was, it was too late. Oh, it's giving up on that. And we've got another cord. Hey, off you go, buddy. There you go. Got him. Oh, I don't get in there. He's in there. And he's out. Another cod. Oh no, now it's a cod. <laughs> Don't get me excited. Another gold spot. Hey, off you go. Plop. I think there's a rock bar just here. Let's try it. And it just feels wrong to get to, you know, to the end of a water hole and not fish the whole length of it. Well, the cod saved the afternoon. They didn't start biting until oh, 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago, and then they just, just didn't stop. So, ah, you always have a few ups and downs when you're fishing. Dare I say, should I, should I challenge myself to get that big jack tomorrow? I'll probably enjoy fishing better if I don't, so let's, let's not make that promise. I'll see you back at the boat. The camera's dying on me, so yeah, I'm doing this in like multiple takes. So what have I forgotten? If you said crab pots, you'd be half right because I'm not going to get them tonight. It's um, it's too late. Uh, a little worried about the crocs, and yeah, I don't want to drag the boat. So I'll have to get them first thing in the morning. But yeah, we made it to the boat before it's dark, so that's a bonus. Oh, a long day of casting. But I've got, I don't know how many fish I got. I got plenty of fish. Anyway, let's get a mozzie coil going. That actually helped last night. Having a little piece of mosquito coil made the boat smell like smoke. And um, yeah, I didn't get one sandfly last night. So I don't think I told you that this morning. All right, we're gonna cook the mangrove jack from yesterday. I think he was, oh, I can't remember now, 44 and a half centimeters or something. Very nice fish. Now, you'd think that I've um, cooked fish every way that you can imagine but every now and then I hear of fans or mum or different people they, they're like have you tried this I'm like no that sounds interesting so that's what we're gonna try tonight have you ever cooked fish with custard <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, we just had some technical difficulties. This camera here plays up sometimes, so. Anyway, let's get back into it. I don't think I lost any footage. We're just gonna do a few little pieces. We'll do through here. There we go, we'll go through here. The fish is already cut into the right size pieces. So I'm going to use the custard to dip the fish in. Now, like I said, I've never done this before. So if someone knows how to do this properly, let me know. I always like to learn. And then we've got panko crumb. Try and grab it on one end. There we go. I'm guessing you take off as much as you can. Chuck it in there. Give it a roll around. I don't see why this wouldn't work. Um, I have actually had a couple of different people recommend this. Just make sure it's fully covered. And put it there. Alrighty. Try a long bit. I'm not going to bore you with all of this. I tell you what, just by looking at the pieces of fish with the, the amount of breadcrumb on there, panko crumb. Um, I reckon this is going to be pretty tasty. It looks like they're just covered in a little bread, bready goodness. I reckon that's going to be, yeah, it's going to work very well. And I can eat the custard. <laughs> oh, oh, sizzle, sizzle. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just starting with the thicker pieces first. And then, yeah, just let them go for 30 seconds and then we'll add the others. Oh, oh and it smells, you know that, that smell from a fish and chip shop? That's exactly what that smell is. Two or three minutes now, probably a little bit longer than I wanted. There we go. Oh, hang on, that was the next one. Yeah, a little bit longer than I wanted. So it's probably gone a little, I was definitely a little too hot initially. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if I don't get a 45 or centimetre jack or higher. Like this fish here was a big fish, 40, 44 and a half I think it was. I've got a feeling, see how it's gone black? I think that's the sugar burning, the sugar inside the custard. Mmm, it does actually smell a little sweet. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Mmm. Take the smallest ones out first. The first one in is the last one out. So have a look at them under the light. They actually look pretty darn good. Let me have a uh, little, little smell test. Hmm, that um, kind of reminds me of like crumb chicken. I thought I'd press record then. <laughs> I just sprinkled salt all over it and had the first piece. So you're not gonna get the um, initial reaction. Um, it does taste good. So what I can tell you is it's very crunchy. Listen to this. Around the edge is super crunchy, but delicate. It's not a hard crunch, it's, it's like a soft, soft crunch. Can you have a soft crunch? The meat, like that, the mangrove jack, is so tender. And there's a sweetness coming through from that custard. Mm. Super white flaky. I think custard and panko crumb is the way to go. That is really delicious. I could actually probably put a bit more salt on there because of that sweetness. Sweet and salt works together. I was trying to figure out how to describe this and as George Voicey used to say, it's Moorish. <laughs> so yeah, if you've got any recipes that I think you should, that you think I should try, give a, give a go, you know, <coughs> experiment with, try. Let me know, put it in the comments. Mmm. Had a great day. Yesterday was a great day. This is that's where this fish came from. 
tomorrow we're going to check the crab pot and I'm not going to try and catch a big mangrove jack. <laughs> yes, I will. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.